Join me on social media. I am DC Born Rob Official on Instagram. I am DC Born Rob Official One on TikTok. I am DC Born Rob O on Twitter. Don't be like this guy right here. You're you're just so stupid. I, I had to send you a video to let you know you're so stupid. That's right. Don't be like this guy right here. Join me on social media. Today, I have David Dodd, the American expat living in Medellin, Colombia. This time, it's an interview. Follow along. Hey, what's the man right now? You're watching DC Born Rob on YouTube. Make sure to hit like and subscribe. Okay, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever it is you're located. Thanks for watching. My name is Rob Christian, also known as DC Born Rob, DC Rob. Rob, I answer to them all. Thank you guys for watching. In this video, again, I have David Dodd, the American expat, who you heard briefly last week, but this time it's going to be an interview. It's about 30, 35 minutes, so stay to the end. If you ever get any benefit out of my videos, do me a favor, go down and hit the subscribe button, click the bell to be alerted of any new videos, and like. Like helps the YouTube algorithm. The more you hit like, the more people get to watch my videos. Now I ask myself, if I was a viewer, would I go down and hit like? Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Oh, of course. Of course. I think we all agree. That's right. So let's just jump into the interview. Okay. Again, guys, I told you I was going to have a special guest. Now, you saw this gentleman in my last video, what, uh, a day or two before, or whenever I posted it. He has a story to share with you guys. And if you have any questions or concerns about what he said in that video, please leave it in a comment in this one right here, but please be polite. Okay. But today, I welcome to the show, David. God, thank you. Thank you for having me. And uh, it's an honor. I uh, found you uh, because I'm in Medellin, Colombia. I uh, I set up a home here. I still bounce back and forth in the States to Medellin. This is home. Uh, the United States is my red, white, and blue ATM machine. You know, I, uh, I am a forcefully retired drug trafficker. Uh, I didn't always obey the law. The federal government always wins. Uh, I have a handful of... MMA fights, a uh, couple of them were in the UFC. Uh, nothing really, nothing really stand out. I never bought a Ferrari from my fight game. The best I could have ever done was pay for the party afterwards. But as a drug trafficker, uh, no, I was a millionaire before I was 30. And, you know, stupid games win stupid prizes. I'm quoting somebody else. Uh, martial arts was easy. Uh, I always broke grass. Uh, maybe I dabbled in some other stuff, you know, whatever I could find a fence. But as a drug trafficker, when the fight game ended for me, uh, I went full bore. I went full bore, professional, whatever you want to call it, only moving crap. Whereas before that, I supplemented my income off and on, opened and closed shop since I was 15 to about 34. I had... I had some layoffs that weren't my fault, some layoffs that were chosen. I joined the Marine Corps right out of high school, like a lot of, you know, tough guys do. Uh, that was one of my layoffs. I started training judo again while I was in the Marine Corps. And uh, when I got out, Gracie's had uh, almost taken over the world by then. You know, I seen this cat scrapping full contact in the gi, and I was like, man, I can do that. So when I got out of the Corps, I... Uh, gently opened the shop i had a couple little accounts uh nothing major and started training full-time i used to bodyguard escorts uh which is its own show it's its own show great fringe benefits that don't have anything to do with the dental plan uh i had that run uh in the fight game couple amateurs some some judo did rio de janeiro a couple of times and then I had my string of pro fights. Towards the end, combat sports is a tough way to make a living, especially if you're not paying the bills. So uh, one day I said, Dave, what are you doing here? You know, I had just moved 300 pounds of grass in Detroit and I cut it. I was like, no, I'm done. And I just, uh, I rolled jiu-jitsu sociably, but I ran pro as a dope dealer until the SWAT team came through my laundry room door pointing assault rifles at me. And that's basically when I shut down, you know, uh, that's an outline of it. Of course, a story always has 
a tone to it. That that that's my quick and easy. That's that's the best I can do for a short clip, Rob. Okay. <laughs> let, me, let, let me back up a little bit for you, uh, David. So, uh, how old are you, first of all? I am forty eight. Forty eight okay. years old. And and you're from where in the U.S.? I'm from Phoenix, Arizona. Born and raised. Okay. Um, and you. You uh, you were incarcerated in the U.S. Uh, for how long? Yeah, I did four and a half years on a six-year sentence. Okay, and, and it was, was that was federally, that wasn't state, that was federally. I was originally indicted by the state. That's its own thirty-minute program. I, I ran from okay. state charge. Got a phone call. State dropped the charges. I come back. I'm um, coaching my son's football team. You know, started off holding the the chains. And, you know, I made sure we got that first down and then turned into a coach. And, uh, yeah, I, I was retired. We had money saved up. Nobody in the house had to work a real job. And a uh, Phoenix SWAT team came through my laundry room door. You know? <laughs> my okay. son. No. no, go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say my son saved us a security door. I had a door nobody was coming through. And uh, when the SWAT team pulled me out, changing their commands, because that's what cops do, and I'm not anti-police officer. Hands in the air, hands on your head, hands in the air, hands on your head. Yeah, and I'm I'm yelling at them because there's nothing in the house. I'm thinking that these guys, you know, got fed a bullshit story. So as I'm arguing with them, you know, hands in the air, hands on your head, I'm like, man, there's nothing here, you waste your fucking time, blah, 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 blah. And the first cop I walked by socked me in the back of the head, and I stopped. Laid down on the garage and, uh, you know, I, I carried, I, I raised pit bulls at the time. Uh, and I was like, man, don't shoot my dogs. They're good dogs. And I saw the hardware that they were going to use to go through my security door. And I was like, man, good boy for opening the garage. Now, he didn't shut the garage door. So he saved, my boy saved me a security door for the second warrant served on me. Okay, let me get man. You you have a lot of chapters to this story, so let's let's cover <laughs> let's cover the, the the last few years if we can. Well, let me ask you: How long have you been in in Colombia? I've been in Colombia since 2015. This this Halloween will be my seven year anniversary. My seven year anniversary with the wife I have now. Okay, so I, it, for everybody who's who's watching this, the reason I asked David to come on is because I heard his two minute statement just as you heard the other day. If you didn't, I'm going to, well, if you didn't go back and take a look at it. It's something you need to see. David, can you do me a favor and just as long as it took you to tell that story, can you tell me the exact same story? The same, if you can, the same way. If you can't, I'll plug it in here. Sure, sure. I mean, I. I, I I think I can paraphrase myself. I'm saying don't come to don't come to Colombia. And it's not a warning, stay out, stay out. It, it's don't come to Colombia if all you're planning to do is indulge in 20-year-old women and enjoy Colombia's gross national products. Stay out. Go to Mexico City, go to Tijuana. Uh it gives a bad name to Americans down here. Like I'm somebody giving good name to them. But but uh, there's no infrastructure set up. If you if you die in Mexico, they have a system to get your body back. If you die down here, no, there's 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 red tape that that is bureaucratic on our government and their government. They're not going to get your body back that easy. Or if you get locked up because guys get locked up for whatever they do, they come in a visit here ain't gonna be easy. But if you're in Tijuana, ah, they they fly to San Diego and walk across. Uh, I'm in love with this place. This place is gorgeous. It is Shangri-La, but it's only Shangri-La from an angle. Do not come down here loose. Somebody will break you off. It is a third world country and there are firearms out down here. You know, there are gangsters down here. You have to guard yourself, period. I say that no matter where you go, but Colombia, I mean, we all know the, the the narco story from from years back, their kids are still running around here. Cousins are still running around here. You know, the next generation are still here. You know, you have to guard yourself. Period. If if you if you want to party, man, I get it. But don't come down here. Go somewhere else. Don't waste my time. I don't even want to see you in immigration. Okay, so I know what you mean by the term. Don't come here. Don't come here loose. 
But could you explain that? But don't come here loose. Don't get sloppy drunk in public. Don't pull out wads of cash. Don't, don't, uh, okay, this is a great one. Stay in your lane, man. If you're, if you're talking to a girl, I don't recommend dating sites, whatever. The hookup culture, it exists from an angle. It ain't like the States where you're going to go to a bar. Hey, mommy, how you doing? Oh, yeah, I love that dress. You come here often. Let's go home. Let's do that thing. That might happen, but I, I don't buy it. Somebody, that's somebody telling a story. Somebody, somebody's badass. So they do hook up down here, and, and most of the, the, the family that I moved into or married into, excuse me, you know, the, the uncles and cousins, they get caught enjoying somebody's time. Uh, and it makes it hot for all the guys in the family who didn't do nothing. There, there are people hooking up down there, but it ain't like the States. You ain't, you ain't going to a bar. Hey, what's up? And then we're scoring. Oh. And the thing with the dating sites, they might work. They, when I first got here, I didn't have a wife. I was a single man in Medellin. I, I partied. I enjoyed the things that men enjoy. <laughs> I even scored from some from from some websites, but I'm worldly. I'm suspect. Everybody's a suspect today. You know, I, I don't I don't trust nobody. Uh, when I say stay in your lane, if you are honestly a two, don't try and pull a ten, man. It, it, you you know, keep one foot on the ground when you're meeting a chick. If she is gorgeous. And she's got a hand tattoo and gorgeous hips, face, blah, 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 tattoo right here. No, that's a honeypot. You stay away from that. You know, governments have been using honeypots to, to catch men slipping for, for hundreds of years. Honeypot. So why wouldn't a gangster who's going to jack you? Hey, mommy, no, just go talk to that gringo. I'm going to be I'm going to be an earshot away if something happens. Leave your phone on. Slip this in his drink. You don't even got to get all of it. Just get a piece of it in his drink and message him. I'll come right up. They're doing that down here. More than more than Rob, that you, you hear people are getting dosed. So I hear about gringos. I hear about foreigners. You and another uh, guy talk about people getting, getting got. Your phrase. My wife is Colombian. She don't speak English. They think of that as a date rate drug. So there are dudes dosing chicks and epar them, you know, and, and, and sexually violating them. So it, 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 is, it, is a, it is a city. It is a metropolis. Stay in your lane. Okay, so you touched on two things. The first one was you said neck tattoo. Is there any significance to a neck tattoo? Really? <laughs> okay. You happen to have a neck tattoo, arm tattoo? I'm speaking of the honey pot specifically that was posted on group she had a hand tattoo which is a red flag she had a neck tattoo she is okay yes and no the younger generation ruined hand tattoos for all good criminals you know they 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 tattoo their faces but when somebody does that they're putting themselves on the other side of the track i don't believe she's got a sleeve a hand tattoo and the tattoo on her neck and she's a secretary. Uh, my lady is an accountant for a payroll company. And, you know, that is a no-no. You know, you know, I know that my, my lawyer has a sleeve. But that being said, it, it is still taboo. Uh, that, that honeypot that was on group, that I would, I, would, I would scroll past that. I would swipe past that. I wouldn't give her any attention. That being said, the, the hand tattoo and the tattoo here. Um, my son, who is a stud in his own right, uh, he got a girlfriend, got a face tattoo. And I'm like, all right, you, well, you be careful. <laughs> whatever, whatever the tattoo says, I say it says, be careful. You know? <laughs> I got you. Well, do, do you know you mentioned? You know that people are getting drugged more than we know. And and yeah. by the time that this aired, I would have already aired an interview that I did with a paramedic there. So we're aware that most of the time we're, we're only seeing what's in high priority areas. 
you know, Provenza, Poblado, uh, Yeah, it's part it, around that area. If it's not in that area, chances are we may not even, it may not make the news that I read every day. And I have 15, 20 different news sources that I scan through and it may not make it uh, to those places. So are you aware of anybody personally? Okay. Uh to, to, to go on crime and violence, yeah, I got a story for you. For the drugging, it is generically thought of as a date rape drug guys use on chicks. And then when they're passed out, they, they take advantage of them. That's how my lady knows of scope. scope of, I mean, it's called scoped, but I think the actual name for it is scope of me. So, so I can't yeah. give you an anecdotal story. Uh, of somebody specifically that got scoped, but I do have a, a, a terrible story that, that involves crime, crime down here, nobody hears about it. And and it's not exactly prosecuted, you know? So I, I, me personally, I'm down here, I'm rolled into the city like a tick. I'm not going anywhere. That being said, I don't really trust the police. It is a third world country. You know, somebody gets arrested, you can bribe your way out of it. Or, or uh, okay, maybe bribe is a bad word. You can pay a fine right there to the cop. You know, uh, there's some things down here that are a little different than Mexico. Uh, man, to not get off subject, those things that Americans like, they go pop real loud and they say, Ma, it's my right. It's my constitutional right to have this thing that goes pop. There's no path in Mexico to have that. There's no path in Mexico to have that. And if you get caught with one of those things that goes pop, you're in trouble. If you're a Mexican, if you're an American, you're in trouble. In Colombia, there's a path to own one of those. There are more of those things that go pop. You know, so the, 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 if a kid, this is travel advice, if a kid pulls out a piece, don't count on that thing not being real. It's probably real. When there's a path, to normal citizens to legally own a gun, there's going to be more guns. There are no gun stores like in good old US of A, you know, but uh, there is a path. A private citizen can own a gun. My my wife can own a gun. You know? mm -hmm. So it is it is dangerous. Well, since you, since you mentioned that, what do you recommend? Obviously, I have an answer for it, but I want to hear you say it. What happens if somebody pulls up on a bike, dude on the back pops off, with this thing that goes pop, yep. what do you do? You fight him back? You give him your stuff. I mean, is it worth it? I, I, uh, I am not that young dude who is pissed at the world for being alive. So, you know, a 25-year-old Dave uh, against a 48-year-old Dave, nah, you give him what you got. He's got a gun. Give it to him. You, you know what you're going to do as a U.S. tourist? You're going to give it to him. You're going to cancel your checks. You're going to, on your next paycheck home, you're going to, everything you gave them, you're going to get it back. And you're a U.S. citizen. You legally have a right to go home. He is not. He's down here. He came up and he got off easy. You got off easy too. So I like to think I'm just going to give it to him. But I tell you how I'm kind of stupid sometimes, especially when my, when my, uh, Adrenaline starts pumping. Right now, sitting in my spare bedroom, I'm going to give him everything. You know, but let's hope that don't happen. <laughs> I, I get it. I look at it now. The, the older you get, it's it's risk reward. I'm What's in. the benefit going to be from you fighting back? What's the downside of that? Sometimes you have to humble yourself. The older you get, you realize you have more that you don't want to lose. Why do you think rich people aren't out fighting on the corner? Not that they I'm can't. In. It may be. I mean, the rock can stand on the corner and start fighting somebody if you want to. But what's the what's the positive to that? He's going yeah. to lose everything. So you learn to humble yourself. And I'm telling you, people, when you go to Colombia or you go anywhere else outside of the United States, first of all, you're on your own. Remember that when you leave this country, you're on your own. The safety net is not there that we have here. It's not great here, but at least you have this safety net, and you can find your way home. You may come up missing, and nobody ever hear about you or know of you ever again there's bodies that come up found down there all the time that are un, uh, that are not identified yes, they. are they americans yeah. so so be careful with that I, you know what david put out as many warnings as i can i tell people stay off the dating site stay off the dating site yes can you find somebody a nice girl and get married yes probably i'm gonna guess probably but what's the odds 
I mean, seriously, start 5%, 10%, 20%. Are you really willing to play that game? What's the downside and what's the upside? I am not, I, I don't want to say I'm not pro or against prostitution. It's a it's a choice. It's a it's a business agreement. I mean, let's face it, every relationship is that way anyway. Girls are what it's for a reason. And it always because they want to, is most of the time because they need to. And this is why Americans, let, let me tell this story right quick, David. Speaking to somebody uh, close to me, older than me, and I was telling uh, her about the good old days, you know, when when the man used to work and bring the money home, and the wife stayed home and watched the kids, and and you know, just life was good. And and she was very feminine. She treated the man like a man. And you know, I've come to the realization that's not because they wanted to. That's because they had to. And then I started, I mean, think about it. They couldn't get insurance if you had a kid back then. I mean, they still don't, women still don't get the same pay as they do here. So yeah, now that they can work and they can make more money and they start to realize that they don't need us. They need us for one or two things. That's it. The rest of it, they don't need us. But the reason that I think the people in Colombia, the women in Colombia, the women in the Philippines, it's okay to date foreigners and, and they, they're very feminine. They treat you well. That's the olden days. Now, the olden days, what I thought was a good old days, wasn't good old days for women, come to find out. So they are dating us because they need us. They need to, to buy that house. They need you to sign on to it. You know, women sure. couldn't buy stuff in the back. They kind of couldn't vote for a certain period of time. So think about it. They need us in Colombia for what? It's, but understand, that's a business relationship. I mean, just understand that that's a business relationship. You go to Philippines, yes, you're spending all the time. Do you notice she's not spending? You are spending. That's the good old days. You're paying. You're paying. So, uh, and I went off on that tangent because I wanted to address that story in another video, but I brought it up here. But guys need to know that it's a business relationship anyway. So that's why I say I'm not pro or against prostitution. It is what it is. But Stay off the dating apps. They are run by the gangs. They're run by the gangs. So yes, there are methods to meet women there. Like I said, you can go to the grocery store. I mean, the girl there in the grocery store, the one putting the bread on the shelf, just as fine as the girl that's out on the corner. Yeah. Brush up on your yeah. Spanish. Well, give us, let me ask you, David, you live there. You're married, but give us your single advice. Give us your single David advice on dating in, in uh, Medellin. Okay, I'll give... Two, I'll give two. I'll give two scenarios. One, you're coming down here for vacation. Two, you're planning on working intermittently. Two, you're planning on setting up a home down here. Uh, that being said, if you're going to get married to any foreigner, I say Colombian, you leave her down here. She will be a good woman to her. You bring her to the United States. What are the chances that she's got track shoes on right when she gets there? What are the chances? somebody else is there waiting for her. So the, the two advices, if you, if you want a good girl and you want a relationship because you're planning on making a life down here and uh, you're just gonna enjoy yourself for vacation. You're gonna just enjoy yourself for vacation. You know, Colombia's gross national product, it's here, it's pure and it's cheap. It's easy to find. That being said, you're ingesting something, man. So, aha. I'm not ingesting anything. I didn't see the seal come off of, and I am no virgin. In regards to ladies, a single man not planning to do anything, then you go to a place, there are, there are establishments. They call them casas. They might call it massage parlor, whatever. It's, it's a cut and dry transaction. It's the same chicks that are stocking shelves at, at, the, at the grocery store. It's the same chicks that are on those dating sites. And when you show up, I'm just going to say casas. When you go to a casa, four of them are going to come out. They're going to bring a presentation of them. And I get a gentleman's club or a cabaret, whatever, in the United States, how uh, strippers are competitive with each other for your attention. Y amore, amore. In those casas, they're the same, man. It is, it is uh, an establishment where the girls are competing and it's probably run by a mafioso who wants you to come back. He's, you're guarded. They're not gonna drug you in an establishment. You're not, that's the safe way to do it. Cause if you're, if you're just planning on indulging, you shouldn't be messing with a good girl. You shouldn't, you know, uh, Bob Marley said, uh, you know, a man who, who, who takes on a woman's heart, I'm paraphrasing Bob Marley, a man who takes on a woman's heart and it doesn't protect it is less of a man. And I feel that same way. 
you know, uh, don't don't play the game, you know, unless you're gonna unless you're gonna take care of her, and that's responsibility, you know. Uh, I'm for. Yeah, I know you said that you're not for it or against it. I'm for it. I'm for it. I think that my life would have been a lot easier if I could have just gone down and took care of an itch. Uh, it is it is the purest exchange. I think it's the oldest. Uh, there's a saying, the oldest. Uh, Rogan had, mm -hmm. Yeah, Rogan had made a, a comment about some chimpanzees that were taught how to use money to exchange it for utility. I like that word. I'm going to keep using it. The first thing that those chimpanzees started buying, this is what we're talking about. It's it's natural. And she ain't going to be calling you. She ain't going to be texting you. You're just coming to Columbia for a good time. You don't want somebody calling you, sending you emails, hitting you up on WhatsApp. She ain't, she, 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 she's going to take care of you and then you're done. She's on to something else. And that's, that's what you're doing because you're just coming down here to party. Uh, I, I want to... Go back on what I said, the establishment, they are going to protect you. You're not, those, the, the cops, the mafiosos, they know where they're at and nobody's getting robbed in those. I haven't heard any stories about guys getting robbed in the establishment. I don't know if you have, but it's because those guys that own it, they, that is a, hey, that is an ATM. That is a cash cow. They're printing money. They, nobody's touching that. I don't think that you can score any kind of dope in those establishments because they're legal. The women go to a doctor and I'm going to talk about age for a second. 20, meaning last year she was 19. Next year she's 21. 20 is too young for me. Have you seen what a 20 year old looks like? That being said, they got to be 18. You're not going to get no kid that, that's going to extort you. Hey, look, I'm only 17 or 16, whatever the hustle is, you know. So she, her age has been verified. She's been vested. And and those dating sites, you're not getting, she's not vested. That's a, that's a honeypot. I scored off of some dating sites, but I'm a knucklehead. Don't, don't follow my example. Uh, let me go over to the... The good girl side, they're everywhere, man. They're everywhere. They're in the grocery store. Uh, you get a routine. So if you're planning on setting up down here and you want a wife, I'm telling you, I I have a gorgeous woman. I'm 12 years older than her. Uh, I stay in my lane. And both you guys, the the, the <laughs> just down here for vacation, and the guy who. Uh, setting up shop, stay in your lane. If you're 70, don't mess with a 20 year old. What's wrong with you, dude? What are you guys going to talk about? That physical act, 15, 20 minutes. And if I'm bragging, I'll say longer. But after that, then what you got? You know, so so stay in your lane. You get somebody that, that okay, socioeconomic, you're going to be above her. Leave her down here. Be good to her. Work intermittently. And buy her the next iPhone when it comes out. She's, she's going to show it to her friends. Keep talking to these good. I'm still talking to these good guys. Americans versus Colombian, Black America, White America, Latino America versus Colombian. They have the same thing: Black, White, mixed race, Indian. Uh, my Italian restaurant that I drink at, I party at. It's run by an Asian who only speaks Spanish with a Argentinian accent. It is multicultural. The Europeans, when they took over North and South America, they did it at a time and everybody was sleeping with everybody. So everybody's down here. I went on a rant. Where was I going with that? Oh, good girl. Stay in your lane, man. Stay in your lane. Uh, leave her down here. I have a, it's technically a penthouse, but it's not what you think penthouse. The first floor is businesses. The second floor is my neighbor. I'm on the third I'm on the third story on a major, uh, two major streets on, on the corner. My rent, and I say rent because <laughs> good luck getting a mortgage called hipoteca. I'm a stranjero residente. Good luck getting a mortgage. I say rent, but my rent, $369 a month, four bedroom, three bath. You know, it's, it's gorgeous. I have a, I have a great room and um, a kitchen utility room the utility room is where my uh washer and dryer are so i i work intermittently 
I started working in the oil field, 28 days on, 28 days off. Not a lot of people can do that. Oil field dried up on me. Uh, started running a truck over the road. I maintained the truck is my big RV apartment, and I shut down every once in a while. I was working for some crooked Serbians out of Chicago. Love those dudes. But they're all going to jail someday. There's just too much Mickey Mouse stuff going there with, with pay and, you know, shortened drivers. These dudes, Chicago, piss off a lot of big black truck drivers. You're not going to make it very far. I, I, I couldn't handle it. They're all like, man, you guys, good luck. But they, they let me work intermittent is what I was getting at. They understood. Go ahead. I need to, I need to, to, to stop because, again, <laughs> Like I said in the beginning, if we go too far, uh, I have to break this into part two. And sure, most sure. people don't watch, probably 60% of the people don't watch this the part two. So what I would like to do, and, and, and this is an offer to you, the next time I do a live for Medellin, Colombia, that you come on with me live, because when we listen to you talk, I know a lot of guys are going to say, they, they're going to reach out to you in the comments, right. Dave. Take me around, bro. Hook me up. Show me where these concerts are and all this stuff. You're going to get this, dude. I'm telling you. <laughs> watch the comments and the last video that I did with you and this one, I mean, the, where I played your videos and this one where I'm interviewing you, you're going to get a lot of uh, questions and answers. So do me a favor. Agree right now that you're willing to come back on a live with me. Absolutely, man. I got stories. I, I, I gave you a skeleton of it. I got stories of... Stuff I got away with, stuff I didn't get away with. I got stories, boy. I tell you what, <laughs> <laughs> scars. <laughs> let's, let's let's leave it there. I think we've given them a taste as to who David Dodd is because I get it right now. So I'm looking forward to hearing some more. But let's do that. Let's let's hang on until let this one. Some after we have uh, posted this, after I posted this one and got sure. everything ready, then. The next time we'll do a live and then the guys will be able to ask you some questions directly and you'll get to hear what the normal, you know, back and forth is in a live chat and you'll get to tell all your stories that way. But dude, as long as you're willing to come back on again, we'll stop now uh, and wrap it up, man. I really appreciate you coming on, man. You you got some stories. You need to tell me that I should have wrote a book. My mom says I need to write a book because there's so many things I've been through that is not on this channel. I smile now, but I wasn't always smiling. I'm smiling because I'm on camera. <laughs> Shoot, as soon as I stop the camera, I'm probably not smiling. I come from D.C. I come from the murder capital, so there wasn't no smiling. Everything was an attitude. When I used to go home, I had an attitude. Which, which you know, it was it was that attitude. I don't have that anymore. I'm happy now. I'm happy, Rob. I'm happy. You're happy there. I love Colombia. I want to support Colombia, Colombians, the women of Colombia. I want to do what I can. And number one, to encourage you to travel, but to encourage you to travel safely. Hence the reason I've asked David to come on and give you some tips and hints. So David, let's wrap up now. Is there anything else, though, that you want to throw out at the end before we jump off? Uh, uh, I, I would like to, to be an echo chamber. Gentlemen, guard yourself. Guard yourself. You are looked at as utility. That's life. That, that's that when you look at life through a lens, you are utility. You just guard yourself. I'm not saying stay on your couch, hide under the bed. No, nah, I, I say go somewhere you don't speak the language, but deal with it. You should be studying Spanish with a different app, especially if you come in here. There's more than one app to choose from. Guard yourself, man. Pay attention. Don't be scared if you're walking down the street to stop and ask somebody, hey, kid, there's a problema. They'll, they'll look for an easier target, man. They will. I'm telling you. And in the United States, I'm worried about busting every little rule. When I'm in the United States, I keep my elbows in. If I sit next to a lady on the on the airplane, that armrest is hers. I don't want to get into a fight ever again in my life. I'm worried that, that I'm going to, if you win, you get scuffed up elbows, knees, and you got to retain an attorney. Well, in Columbia, you don't really need to. You know, you get into a fight, those cops don't want to deal with it. So what I was leading at is somebody's walking behind you. Okay, okay, you have some problem? He'll look for somebody else. He'll look for a woman. A lot of the muggings, I know we know about Americans. They mug women down here, man. Unbelievable. I have a story of somebody tried to mug my wife, and she's too stupid to give her stuff up. So when she was arguing with him, the taxi driver got him with a machete in his shoulder. His little buddy took off. The crowd pinned him down because they weren't robbing a gringo. They were robbing a lady. Crowd pinned him down. When the cops came, they let him go. He says, what do you want me to do? You hit him with a machete. I, I, what am I going to do? So don't be scared to slap somebody because you're worried 
protect yourself, guard yourself. Don't slap somebody if you can avoid it, but guard yourself, Don. Sorry, I went on a rant. I do. Oh, that's okay. Now I'm gonna. I'm, hey, let me let me preface everything <laughs> I just said. Let me go back and jump in front of it. Okay, David is a tough guy. Okay, he's an MMA fighter. He ain't no punk, like I told you in the last one. Don't 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 challenge no <laughs> David. Don't encourage no fighter to fight back down there. Walk away. There's always another day, man. Humble yourself. Humble yourself. But David, man, much appreciation, man. Let's cut out now, and and uh, oh. uh, I'll set up a time when this is going to post. I'll let you know that the, the other video, this one, when it's going to post, and then we'll jump on a live right after. You'll be on my next live. promise that. Yeah, sounds good. I appreciate it. I'm here for you. Much appreciation, man. We'll talk soon, okay? Ciao. Ciao. Okay. All right, bye. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, make sure you go down and hit subscribe. You definitely like it helps that YouTube algorithm. You know what I'm talking about? See what I'm saying? We have a YouTube channel. Like it. Please comment and share if you like the video. Please subscribe and kick the bell.